Welcome friends, we are here for a discussion of previous year questions that have been asked by UPSC in last 10 to 12 years of prelims examination, civil services examination. Our subject is geography. The entire questions that have been asked in last 10 to 12 years have been divided into few segments. I shall be discussing a particular set of questions and the total number of questions for discussion today here is 56. So starting with the first question over here, question number one. Which one of the following pairs of islands is separated from each other by the 10 degree channel? And the options are Andaman and Nicobar, Nicobar and Sumatra, Maldives and Lakshadweep, Sumatra and Java. Now it is a <coughs> completely map based question. If you need to answer that type of question and you want your answers to be correct, you need a pragmatic and a comprehensive understanding of the map work. For that, without looking at the map, you won't be able to, uh, able to uh, arrive at the correct answer. 10 degree channel is separating which of the water bodies? Andaman, Nicobar, Nicobar, Sumatra, Maldives and Lakshadweep and Sumatra and Java. Let us have a look at the map over here. So look at this particular map. When you look at this particular map, here we are having Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Between Andaman and Nicobar group of islands, the water body that separates Andaman from Nicobar is 10 degree channel. The water body that separates Lakshadweep from Minikoi uh, entire part of Lakshadweep from Minikoi that is 9 degree channel. The water body that separates entire Lakshadweep or you can say Minikoi from Maldives that is 8 degree channel. In the same manner, the water body that separates Andaman and Nicobar or the uh, southernmost part of Nicobar with Sumatra of Indonesia that is 6 degree channel that is Great Channel. So if you are having a pragmatic understanding about the map, you will be able to answer this particular question. Coming back to the question, which one of the following pairs of island is separated by 10 degree channel? The answer shall be Andaman and Nicobar. So option A shall be the correct answer. Between Nicobar and Sumatra, as I uh, showed you just now, we are having the water body that is 6 degree channel, alternatively known as Great Channel. Between Maldives and Lakshadweep, the water body is 8 degree channel. Between Sumatra and Java, Sumatra and Java are the islands of Indonesia. They are separated by a water body that is called as Sunda Strait. Okay, so the answer was option A. Coming to next question, question number 2. Turkey is located between Black Sea and Caspian Sea, Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea, Gulf of Suez and Mediterranean Sea, Gulf of Aqaba and Dead Sea. Now again, Turkey, something that is a part of Middle East, part of West Asia. This is one of the regions which cannot be left behind if you are preparing for UPSC. No matter whether you, uh, the question comes up in your prelims or in the mains. And if not in these two modules, then in the interview. They will be asking you on this particular region. This is a very important region. Always remains in the limelight. So again, you need to look at the map for this particular question. Now have a look at the map of Turkey. This is Turkey. Old name is Anatolia. North of Turkey, the, we are having... Black Sea, south of Turkey, this is exactly the water body is called a Rum Sea, however it is a part of Mediterranean, whether it is Aegean Sea on this side, that is also a part of Mediterranean. So Turkey is located between two water bodies, Black Sea in the north and Mediterranean in the south. On the eastern side, it is a landmass, on the western side, again, a part of Mediterranean and part of continental Europe. So the answer shall be between Black Sea and Mediterranean. Again, have a look. At the question, Turkey is located between Black Sea and Caspian Sea? No. Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea? So option B, Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea will become the right answer. It has nothing to do with Gulf of Suez and Gulf of Aqaba. That are part of Red Sea. So C and D cannot be there. This is a very important region. This region remains in limelight. Be it related to Palestine, be it related to Jerusalem, Israel, Middle East. That is the hub for petroleum. Since because it is the hub for petroleum, so it always remains at the center of dispute. Moreover, multiple religions originated from this particular region, so remains at the center of this uh, dispute. Very famous dispute between Israel and Palestine going on since decades and again at the center of dispute. Recently, this year, we had a major earthquake in Turkey. Turkey and Syria. Loss of life took place, loss of property took place. Due to all these reasons, this re uh, region will again remain at the center of discussion in your UPSC, be it prelims or mains examination. So don't miss this particular region, come what may. Coming to the next question, question number three. What is the correct sequence of occurrence of the following cities in Southeast Asia as one proceeds from North to South? Now the question arises, again a map based question. Southeast Asia. 
what do we mean by Southeast Asia? Which countries are included in Southeast Asia? For that, we again need to have a look at the map. When we look at the map, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, Philippines, these all countries, the member of ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, these countries are of Southeast Asia. And the question is giving you four cities which you need to arrange in a particular order. Coming back to the question, have a look. What is the correct sequence of occurrence of the following cities in Southeast Asia as one proceeds from South to North? So the correct sequence has been asked in the order South to North and the options are Bangkok that is located in Thailand, Hanoi located in Vietnam, Jakarta that is in Indonesia and Singapore is in itself a country and, and is in itself a city as well. Have a look at this particular map again. If you look over here, <coughs> if you look at Indonesia, Jakarta, located at this particular location, then Bangkok, Thailand over here, Hanoi present over here, and another option over there was Singapore. So Jakarta over here, then Singapore, then you are having Bangkok, and then you are having Hanoi. So if the order is north to south, uh, answer shall be Hanoi followed by Bangkok, followed by Singapore, followed by Jakarta. But the question is asking south to north. So you have to arrange them in an order that is starting from south. So the southernmost city will be Jakarta followed by Singapore, followed by Bangkok, followed by Hanoi. So the answer shall be 3, 4, 1 and 2. Have, looking at the option 3, 4, 1 and 2, option C shall become the right answer to this particular question. Moving to next question, consider the following pairs, places of pilgrimage and the location. Now it is a match the following type of question. You need to find that which of the pairs are correctly matched. Sri Sailam, Nallamala. Sri Sailam is located on Nallamala Hills. Nallamala Hills are located in Andhra Pradesh. At the northern part of Nallamala Hills, we are having the location of Sri Sailam, so it is absolutely correct one. Statement 2 says that Onkareshwar on Satmala Hills. Now, Onkareshwar is located on Mandhata Hills, that is located in Madhya Pradesh. It has nothing to do with Satmala Hills. Satmala Hills are located close to Nasik district of Maharashtra and it is close to Thalghat that connects Mumbai with Nasik. So, Satmala Hills located in Maharashtra, Onkaresha located in Madhya Pradesh, it is incorrectly matched, so it will be a wrong one. Pushkar, one of the famous uh, pilgrimage places of Hinduism that is located in Rajasthan, that is located on the western margin of Ravalis in Rajasthan, very close to Pakistan border, that is in Rajasthan and the location given over here is Mahadev Hills. Mahadev Hills are a basically a mountain range which is a part of central Cordillera, it joins Satpura and it is located in Madhya Pradesh. Again, Pushkar has nothing to do with Mahadev Hills because Mahadev Hills is in Madhya Pradesh and Pushkar is in Rajasthan. So, one is correctly matched, two and three are incorrect. So, which of the above is a correctly matched? The answer shall be one only option A shall become the right answer. Moving on to next question. Question number five. Which one of the following countries of Southwest Asia does not open out to Mediterranean Sea? Again, as I told you, Central Asia. Middle East always remains at the center of discussion in our examination when we are preparing for UPSC that to civil services examination. Now it is asking Southwest Asia does not open out to Mediterranean Sea and the four countries are given as Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and Israel. Now which of these countries are not having their coastline on Mediterranean? Again to answer this question you are supposed to look at a map. Have a look at a map of West Asia. Mediterranean Sea is there. Turkey is having its border on Mediterranean, Syria is having its border, Lebanon is having its border, Israel is having its border. Jordan, if you look at Jordan, if you look at this particular map and you focus on this particular region of Jordan, then Jordan is having a very small coastline over here that is on Gulf of Aqaba and Gulf of Aqaba is part of Red Sea. If you look at this particular water body, this is Gulf of Suez, but these are not part of Mediterranean, these are part of Red Sea. So Gulf of Aqaba and Gulf of Suez, they are part of Red Sea and Jordan is having its coastline on Gulf of Aqaba. It has nothing to do with Mediterranean Sea. Then Iraq over here, Iraq is having its coastline on Gulf of Persia, it has nothing to do with Mediterranean Sea. So you need to 
have a clear cut understanding of the map if you want to answer such questions. Coming back to the question, which one of the following countries of Southwest Asia does not open out to Mediterranean Sea means simply which country is not having its coastline directly on Mediterranean. So we just now saw that Syria is having its coastline, Lebanon is having its coastline, Israel is having its coastline, but Jordan is not having its coastline on Mediterranean, rather it is having a very small coastline on Gulf of Aqaba, which is a part of Red Sea and technically that will become a part of Indian Ocean. Right. So here the answer shall be option B that is Jordan. Next question, question number six. <coughs> Recently linking of which of the following rivers was undertaken? Now this question was asked in 2016. When it was asked in 2016, at that time, Godavari, Godavari and Krishna linking was being carried out. And so this question became relevant at that particular time. It will not be relevant in 2023 or 2024, right? However, the answer to this particular question is Godavari and Krishna, that is option B, B for boy. Coming to question number 7, consider the following pairs. Famous places are they given and the region is given. Bodh Gaya and Baghelkhand. Now, Bodh Gaya is located between a region that is between Chotanagpur Plateau and the plains of Bihar. It has nothing to do with Baghelkhand, so it is incorrectly mad. Khajurao, one of the famous places that is located in Madhya Pradesh and yes, it is very much located in the Bundelkhand region of Madhya Pradesh, so it is the correct one. Shirdi is located in the Ahmednagar city of Maharashtra and Vidarbha is on the eastern side of Maharashtra. It is quite far away from the Vidarbha region, so it is incorrectly matched. So, one is incorrect, two is correct. 3 is incorrect. The remaining part of the question, Nasik on Malwa. Now Nasik is again located on the western side of Maharashtra, very close to Thalgat. And Malwa is on the northern side of uh, these uh, mountain ranges of central India. So it is, again it has nothing to do with that particular region. Tirupati on Rail Sima. Tirupati is located on Palkonda Hills, that is the Tirumala Parvat. Again a sacred place of Hinduism. That is located in South India in the state of Andhra Pradesh. It is located on the Rail Sima Plateau. It is absolutely correct. So, going by the statements, one was wrong, two was correct, and five is correct. So, two and five are correct. Which of the pairs given above are correctly matched? Two and five only. Option C, C for cat, shall become the right answer. Next question is question number eight. See again, the third question on the same region. Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following countries? Every second year, you will get a question on West Asia or Middle East or something related to that region in your prelims. And if you are saved from that particular region in your prelims, you will get an answer in your mains examination. And if you will not get even there, they will sit, make you sit, being seated in, your, in front and ask you one to one on this particular region. Don't skip the re this region, very important area. So, Mediterranean Sea is border of which of the following countries? Again, the options are Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon and Syria. Jordan we saw it is not having its coastline on Mediterranean. Iraq is having its coastline in Gulf of Persia. It has nothing to do with Mediterranean. Lebanon and Syria were having their coastline on Mediterranean. So which of the countries are having border? So Jordan is not having, Iraq is not having, but Lebanon and Syria are having their border. So three and four only. Option C, C for cat shall become the right answer. Question number nine, which of the following has have shrunk immensely dried up in recent past due to human activities? And the options are Aral Sea, Black Sea and Lake Bekal. Now, when these type of questions come up in your prelims examination and if you are not following the current affairs, you won't be able to answer them. There are n number of water bodies present throughout the world. Out of them, many of these water bodies are drying out. Many of these water bodies are having different uses. Some are used for multipurpose river valley projects. Some are used for uh, simple, simply potable water. Some are used for irrigation. n number of uses are there. Now, if you are not aware about the map work, you won't be able to answer that because it has to be linked with climatology along with the contemporary happenings that are taking place in that particular region. Where is Aral Sea located? It is located in part of Central Asia. Two rivers make inland drainage at Aral Sea. They are Amudarya and Sirdarya. And both these rivers are overexploited, rather immensely overexploited for irrigation, for agriculture and for drinking water needs. As a result, Aral Sea is immensely drying up. You need to focus on this particular part of the question, which is saying that it is immensely drying up. It is not simply asking that which of the water bodies immensely. Immensely word means it is drying up at an exhaustive rate. So Aral Sea becomes a part of that. Now Black Sea. 
ब्लैक सी इज कनेक्टेड बाय स्टेट ऑफ बोस्पोरस टू मरमरा सी मरमरा सी इज कनेक्टेड बाय स्टेट ऑफ डार्डेनलस टू एजियन सी एजियन सी इज अ पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ मेडिटेरेनियन एंड मेडिटेरेनियन इज कनेक्टेड बाय स्टेट ऑफ जेब्राल्टर टू एटलांटिक इट मींस ब्लैक सी इज डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड टू एटलांटिक ओशन now a water body that is directly connected to atlantic ocean cannot dry out immensely however there is a problem of eutrophication due to which black sea is witnessing excessive evaporation moreover it is almost a land locked sea surrounded on all side by continental land mass so that may be a reason but that cannot be that cannot go with this particular statement that it is immensely drying up right lake baikal lake baikal is one of the deepest lake that is located in the region of Russia Lake Baikal is drying up but again if we compare the level of drying that is taking place in Aral Sea and Baikal they are not comparable so again the word immensely drying up will not go with Lake Baikal so the answer shall be option A one only that is Aral Sea have a look at the map over here you need to have a look this is the location of black sea sorry this is the location of lake baikal one of the deepest lakes of the world this is the location of aral sea where sir darya and amu darya drains and this is the location of black sea it is connected by a strait of bosporus marmara sea strait of dardanelles aegean sea strait of gibraltar to atlantic so you need to see the location also learn the location from east to west or west to east of lake balkash lake baikal aral sea caspian sea and black sea in the coming session you may get a question a probable question that arrange these water bodies from east to west or west to east which are uh, whatever upsc things that may be asked right so do work on this particular map properly so the answer is a only option a one only that is aral sea that was question number 9 coming to our next question that is question number 10 which one of the following is an artificial lake and options are kodai canal tamil nadu kolleru andhra pradesh nainital uttarakhand and renuka himachal pradesh which of them is an artificial lake means a man made lake kodai canal tamil nadu that is a man made lake that was made somewhere in 1863 it is in the shape of a star it is having very less depth almost 3 meters deep on an average and that is a man made lake that is located in tamil nadu so the answer shall be option a kodai canal if you look at kolleru kolleru is a natural lake that is located in between the deltas of godavari and krishna in between the deltas of godavari and krishna in andhra pradesh we are having this lake that is lake kolleru it is a natural lake nainital in uttarakhand one of the famous hill stations of kumau himalayas that is located in nainital is the name of the district as well the specific spot is also called as nainital the lake over there is nani lake or it is called as nainital in uttarakhand it is also a natural lake that is formed in a syncline so it is a syncline lake that is located in uttarakhand renuka lake is located in himachal pradesh it is also a natural lake it is known for its karst formations number of karst landforms are present over there it is having its relevance as per hindu mythology in hinduism as well so renuka lake is also a natural lake so the answer shall be option a that is kodai canal in tamil nadu question number 11 siachen glacier is situated to options are east of aksai chin east of le north of gilgit north of nubra valley east of aksai chin siachen glacier is located on the western side of aksai chin so that cannot be the answer east of le le is located slightly south slightly east of siachen so siachen can be northwest of le it cannot be east of le north of gilgit again gilgit is located on the western side of siachen so it can be on the eastern side of gilgit it cannot be on the north of gilgit north of nubra valley now nubra is a river that originates from siachen it is a tributary of river shyok and shyok is a tributary of indus so north of nubra nubra valley it is will be the right answer correct answer to this particular question again you need to have a look at a map of <coughs> siachen glacier have a look siachen glacier aksai chin aksai chin over there the option was saying on east of aksai chin how it can be east of aksai chin that will be west of aksai chin this round is siachen glacier so that will be west of aksai chin another option was on the west of gilgit gilgit is present over here so it will be on the east of gilgit right other option was leh 
So it is located on the north of Leh, but the option was not on the north of Leh. So it is northwest of Leh, it is correct. North of Nubra Valley, here we are having the river Shio, and here somewhere here we are having the river Nubra. So it will be located on the northern side of Nubra Valley, so that will be the correct answer to this particular question. So option D, north of Nubra Valley will be the correct answer. Again, you can verify with the map. If you get a question in your prelims examination that is based on the map, do look at the map only then you will be having a clear cut understanding about that particular question. Next question, question number 12. Consider the following pairs. <coughs> River Mekong flows into, rivers are given and flows into are given. So river and flows into Mekong, Andaman Sea, Thames, Irish Sea, Volga, Caspian Sea, Zambezi, Indian Ocean. Now if you look at these particular rivers, Mekong, <coughs> it drains and makes a delta close to Ho Chi Minh City and drains in South China Sea. It has nothing to do with Andaman Sea, so it will be a wrong one. Thames, Thames is flowing through the city of London. It is considered as a sacred river. Like in India, we are having Narmada, we are having Godavari, we are having Ganga, which are holy and sacred. In the same manner, Thames is considered as sacred in London. It drains towards North Sea. Irish Sea is located on the opposite side of North Sea. So that is not Irish Sea, it is also incorrectly matched Volga, Caspian Sea. Now Volga is a river that drains in the northern part of Caspian. In fact, this river Volga adds so, adds so much of fresh water in the northern part of Caspian that the entire salinity of Caspian on the northern part changes. So Volga drains in Caspian Sea, it is correct. It is one of the largest rivers of Europe. Zambezi in Indian Ocean. Zambezi is a river that makes the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe. In fact, this river was chosen to divide that country and it uh, divided into two countries as Zambia and Zimbabwe and it drains into Indian Ocean. So it is a correct one. So one is wrong, two is wrong, three is correct, four is correct. So option three and four, option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Again, you can have a look at the map of the world rivers. If you look at the rivers over here, then the options over here were Mekong. See over here. This particular river, this river is Mekong. It is raining in South China Sea. Andaman Sea is located over here. So Mekong has nothing to do with Andaman Sea. Another river was Thames. Thames is not shown in this particular map. This water body is North Sea and this water body is Irish Sea. But Thames is drawing, uh, flowing eastward. So it drains in North Sea, nothing to do with Irish Sea. Other option was River Jambezi. This is River Jambezi dividing Zambia and Zimbabwe. See these two countries are divided and draining in Indian Ocean. So it is a correct one. Other option was having a look at the question again. Volga. Volga. This is the river Volga, draining in the northern part of Caspian. As a result, the northern part of Caspian records low salinity. The southern part of Caspian records high salinity because of addition of fresh water by Volga. So this is the role of map in your prelims examination. Question may or may not appear from geography, but again, a map will be playing a role in that and geography is the only subject where you will be following atlas. So here the answer is 3 and 4, 3 and 4 only, option C, C for cat becomes the right answer. Next question is question number 13. Which one of the following lakes of West Africa has become dry and turned into a desert? Which of the following lakes of West Africa has become dry? So question is men mentioning about West Africa. Now you need to know the locations of the lakes. Lake Victoria, Lake Fagubin, Lake Oguta and the last option is Lake Volta. Now if you look at these four options, three options over here and one option over here, Lake Volta. Lake Victoria, that is not located in West Africa in fact. And Lake Victoria is located on equatorial area. It is on equatorial area, it receives immense amounts of, immense amount of convection rainfall. So it is not at all becoming dry. And the question is, has become dry and turned into a desert. It means it is almost dry. 
or rather it is all <coughs> gone. Lake Fagubin, where is it located? Now this Lake Fagubin is located on the northern side of Mali. Rather, southwestern part of Sahara Desert, northern part of country Mali and this lake has turned into a desert. It, in fact, it has mingled with the desert of Sahara. So this is the answer to this particular question that is option B, Lake Fagubin. Lake Oguta, Lake Oguta is located in Nigeria, on the southern part of Nigeria. Again, it is close to equatorial area and receive immense amount of precipitation in the form of convectional rainfall. So Lake Oguta cannot be answered. And if you look at the fourth option that is Lake Volta. Lake Volta is a man-made lake that is located on river Volta in the country Ghana. It is also having immense amount of water so that cannot be the answer. Again in this particular question you can have a look at the map work. If you look at this particular map then this is Lake Victoria. This is the location of Lake Victoria. This is Lake Volta which we are talking about. Right Here we are having this lake that is called a Lake Oguta and here we are having this lake that is Lake Fagubin. So the question was asked on these particular lakes and the answer is Lake Fagubin of Mali. That is the correct answer to this particular question. So the answer was option B, B for boy Lake Fagubin. Question number 14. The term Levant often heard in news roughly corresponds to which of the following regions? The term Levant is a holy term. It uh, basically demarcates an area that is located on the east of Italy, the land of rising sun, the eastern shores of Mediterranean. That is the term that is used for, the, that is the region for which the term is used as Levant. And the options are region along the eastern Mediterranean shores, region along North African shores stretching from Egypt to Morocco, region along Persian Gulf and Horn of Africa, the entire coastal areas of Mediterranean. So the correct answer to this particular question will be option A, region along eastern Mediterranean shores. That will be the right answer. So the region along the eastern side of Italy, having the shore of Mediterranean, basically part of West Asia, that will become, be termed as Levant. So for 14, option A shall be the right answer. Question number 15, consider the following countries. Azerbaijan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. Which of the above have borders with Afghanistan? Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan have nothing to do with Afghanistan. Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, 3, 4 and 5 are having borders with Afghanistan. Apart from that, Afghanistan is also having border with Iran, with Pakistan, with India and China. So these 7 countries share borders with Afghanistan. Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, that is number 3, 4 and 5, along with Iran, Pakistan, India and China. Again, you can have a look at the map of Afghanistan. Have a look at this particular map. If you look at the map of Afghanistan, you will find that Afghanistan is having border with Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, China, India, Iran, Pakistan. These are the countries which are having borders with Afghanistan. So you need to select the correct answer. The correct answer was Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. If you look at the remaining sections, then the remaining sections are Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan are not present in this particular map. Azerbaijan is a part of Caucasus country that is located between Black Sea and Caspian Sea. Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Kyrgyzstan is located on the northern side of these countries. So it has nothing to do with the border of Afghanistan. So 3, 4 and 5, 3, 4 and 5, option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Question number 16. Consider the following pairs. Wetlands are given and the location are given. So, Hokera wetland in Punjab. Hokera wetland is located close to the city Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir region. It is located very close to the river Jhelum. So, it is in Kashmir region. It has nothing to do with Punjab. So, it is the wrong one. Renuka wetland in Himachal Pradesh. We just now discussed in one of the questions. Renuka lake that is located in Himachal Pradesh. It is the Ramsar site. It is the correct one. So, two is correct. One is wrong. Rudra Sagar Lake is in Tripura. Now Rudra Sagar Lake is called as Neer Mahal. It is also a Ramsar site that is located in Tripura. It is absolutely correct. 
Sastham Kota Lake is not in Tamil Nadu, it is located in Kerala. It is on the bank of this lake, there is a temple that is called as Sastha Temple that is located in Kerala, very famous temple in Kerala. So, one was correct, I think so. One was Hokera Wetland, Punjab, no, it was wrong. Renuka, two was correct and three is correct. So, two and three are correct and two are wrong. How many pairs given above are correctly matched? Only two pairs, option B, B for boy, shall be the right answer. Now, in these type of alternatives, which UPSC has introduced recently, one pair, two pair, three pair, UPSC is eliminating the trick of elimination. So, you need to be very sincere in your preparation for your prelims examination especially. Question number 17. Consider the following states. Andhra, Kerala, Himachal, Tripura. How many of the above are generally known as the tea producing states? Now, question is appearing quite general when it appeared, a student got confused. What do we mean by tea producing states in general? In general, there is a tea board under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. That tea board will certify which of the states are generally known as tea producing states. However, here Andhra is not a part of that. Kerala, Himachal and Tripura are part of that. Apart from that, Karnataka is a part of that. Tamil Nadu is part of that. West Bengal is part of that. Assam is part of that. So Kerala, Himachal and Tripura will be the correct answer 2, 3 and 4. So how many of the above are generally known as? Only 3 states. Option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Question number 18. Consider the following pairs. Reservoirs are given and the states are given. So Ghat Prabha. Ghat Prabha is located on river Krishna. It has nothing to do with Telangana. It is located in the state of Karnataka. Gandhi Sagar is located on river Chambal. And it is located in Madhya Pradesh. The state is correct. Indra Sagar in Andhra Pradesh. This was a bit tricky. Indra Sagar is basically a dam, the reservoir that is located on river Narmada and it is located in Madhya Pradesh. Indra Sagar Puravalam is another dam that is located on in the, uh, this particular state that is Andhra Pradesh and that was used for Godavari Krishna link project, right? But here Indra Sagar is given, the complete name is not given and Indra Sagar as a complete name for reservoir is located in Madhya Pradesh, that is on the river Narmada. So it will be a wrong one. Methon Dam, it is located on river Barakar, close to Dhanbad district in Jharkhand. So it has nothing to do with Chhattisgarh. So it is also a wrong one. So one is wrong, three is wrong, four is wrong. How many of the uh, pairs given above are not correctly matched? So three pairs are not correctly matched. So only three pairs, option C, C for cat, shall be the right answer to this particular question. Question number 19, consider the following statements. Gujarat has the largest solar park in India, is it so? The largest solar park in India is located in Rajasthan, that is the Badla, National, uh, that is the Badla Solar Park. That is in Rajasthan. Kerala has a fully solar powered international airport. The first fully solar powered international airport is of Cochin and that is located in Kerala. So the statement is absolutely correct. Goa is the largest floating solar photovoltaic project in India. Goa is not having that. Telangana is having that. It is Ramagundam floating solar photovoltaic project, right? It is not in Goa. So one is wrong, three is wrong, two is correct. So two only option B, B for Goa shall be the right answer. Question number 20. In India, the problem of soil erosion is associated with which of the following? Here, the keyword that you need to focus over here, very important keyword is in India. The problem. Now, the options are terrace cultivation. Terrace cultivation will be a problem of soil erosion. When terrace cultivation is there, it will check soil erosion. The steps will be created on the slope, will be formed on the slope and so the surface runoff or the running of the soil particles down the slope will be reduced, will be minimized. So it will not cause soil erosion, rather it will prevent soil erosion. So it will not go with that. Deforestation, yes. Felling of trees, that is deforestation will result in soil erosion, that is absolutely correct. Tropical climate, here the question becomes tricky. And what is the trick over here? In India, the problem of soil erosion is associated with which of the following? Tropical climate means heavy rainfall. Heavy rainfall will cause soil erosion. Secondly, tropical climate means tropical cyclones that will create result in soil erosion. Tropical climate means strong winds, it will again may result in soil erosion. So, tropical climate may become a parameter to say that the region is affected by soil, soil erosion. But 
the question is saying talking only about India and India is having almost 90% of the area under tropical climate and 10% of the area under temperate climate. But the region of India which is under tropical climate is not prone to erosion. The region of India which is not under tropical climate is prone to erosion and thereby tropical climate will not be an answer to this particular question. That will not go with the language of the question and so two only option two that is option B before boy two only shall be the right answer to this particular question. Question number 21 with reference to agricultural soils consider the following statements. A high content of organic matter in soil drastically reduces its water holding capacity is it so if organic matter is more if humus content is more it will increase the water holding capacity so it will be a wrong one it will not reduce soil does not play any role in the sulfur cycle the rocks disintegrate sulfur is there in the soil sulfur reacts with oxygen sulfate is formed sulfate is taken up by the plants which is transformed into organic matter that organic matter again decomposes and add to the soil so soil is playing the role it cannot be said that soil does not play any role. So it is also a wrong one. Irrigation over a period of time can contribute to the salinization of some agricultural lands. Yes, if over irrigation is done or continuously the field is irrigated, then infiltration of water takes place. When infiltration takes place, water seeps down. When the water seeps down by the capillary action, salts are pulled up. The salts move up and over a period of time, irrigation may result in salinization of that particular region. Recently, not recently, around six to seven years back, a research was conducted around the canals in northern India. Various canals around the northern in the region of North India were assessed, and all around the canals, it was found that water is seeping out continuously because the banks of the canals are not having concrete structures. They were mud canals. And water was seeping out due to that, salinization was taking place. So it is a correct one. So one is wrong, two is wrong, three is correct. So three only option B, B for boy shall be the right answer. Question number 22, which one of the following regions of India has a combination of mangrove forest, evergreen forest and deciduous? Mangrove is also there, so coastal area has to be there. Evergreen forest is there, so the climate of evergreen forest has to be there. And deciduous forest is also present. Now, north coast of Andhra. Now the coastal area of Andhra will not be having all these three categories. Southwest of Bengal, very close to Andhra coast only, it will also not be having all these. Southern Saurashtra, Southern Saurashtra, the southern part of Gujarat on the northern side of Maharashtra, on the bank of having its coastline on Arabian Sea, that cannot also have all these three type of forests, evergreen forests will not be found over there. Andaman and Nicobar. Now Andaman and Nicobar is having the coastal area, it is having the plain area, it is having the mountains as well. All the type of landforms are present mostly on Andaman and Nicobar and so it will be having mangrove forest, yes, evergreen forest, yes, and deciduous forest, yes. So all the three forests will be found on Andaman and Nicobar. So option D, D for dog shall be the right answer. Question number 23, consider the following states, Arunachal, Himachal and Mizoram. In which of the above states do tropical wet evergreen forests occur? So first criteria is tropical and it has to be wet evergreen. It means it has to um, meet the criteria of rainfall as per wet evergreen. So Arunachal, Himachal and Mizoram, the clear answer, Himachal Pradesh cannot have that much of precipitation in the form of raindrops. It can have precipitation in the form of a snowfall, but not in the form of raindrops. So Arunachal and Mizoram will be the correct answer, one and three only. Option C, C for cat shall be the right answer to this particular question. Question number 24, consider the following states, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odisha. Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odisha. And what is the question? With reference to the states mentioned above, in terms of percentage of forest cover to the total area of the state, which one of the following is the correct ascending order? Ascending order means minimum to maximum. Now, if you look at all these states, Maharashtra is having almost this percentage as almost 16%. Madhya Pradesh is having almost 25%, Odisha 33% and Chhattisgarh 41%. Now, how to know that? How to remember that? How can we know that? So, forest report, it comes every two years. You need to follow that. 
forest report of 2021 is out in the market you need to follow that if you are appearing for 2023 or 2024 prelims examination you need to have a clear cut understanding of that particular report so here the order shall be 3 2 4 and 1 so 3 2 4 and 1 option c c for cat shall be the right answer all india forest cover what is our status of all india forest cover almost 24.62 it is between 24 and 25% that is the all india figure 25 if you travel through the himalayas you are likely to see which of the following plants naturally growing there now the question is becoming tricky naturally growing there oak rhododendrons and sandalwood everything can be grown over there but when we talk about natural growth then oak and rhododendron will be a part of that sandalwood will not be a part of that it requires a dry climate right so one and two only option a a for apple shall be the correct answer question number 26 with reference to red sandals red sandals is red sandalwood sometimes seen in news consider the following statement red sandals is found on eastern ghats it is a tree species found in parts of south india yes it is found in parts of south india specifically on eastern ghats it is one of the most important trees in the tropical rainforest red sandals is red sandalwood it has nothing to do with tropical rainforest it will go in grow well in hot less rain or absence of rain will be suitable for that right so one will be correct two will be wrong so one only option a a for apple shall be the right answer to this particular question next question question number 27 In which of the following regions of India are you most likely to come across the Great Indian Hornbill in its natural habitat? Great Indian Hornbill. Great Indian Hornbill was added to IUCN Red List in 2018, and so it was very much relevant. Great Indian Hornbill is reducing in number. Why? Because loss of habitat, because of deforestation. That is the problem that is happening. It is found in the stretches of himachal pradesh nepal northeast of india indonesia parts of western ghats very cold climate is not suitable very hot climate is not suitable however the foothills and the lower stretches of himalayas are suitable for that so have a look sand deserts of northwest india nothing to do with sand desert right higher himalayas of jammu and kashmir higher himalayas means perennial cover of snow so it cannot sustain that salt marshes of western gujarat salt marshes will again be having a typical type of climate which will not be suitable western ghats however becomes the most suitable answer to this particular question for great indian hornbill so option d d for dog western ghats is the right answer question number 28 consider the following statements asiatic lion is naturally found in india only yes it is found only in gir forest of gujarat so it is naturally found only in india so it is the correct one double humped camel is naturally found in india only it is not naturally found in india it is a natural species of gobi desert of china right so it will be a wrong one one horned rhinosaur is naturally found in india yes but it is written only it is also found in nepal so the statement will become wrong so one is correct two is wrong three is wrong which of the statements are correct so one only option a a for apple shall be the right answer question number 29 in elephants consider the following statements now you are referring to indian elephants consider the following statements the leader of an elephant group is a female yes she is called as a matriarch it is called as a matriarch that is a female always a female it is a correct one the eldest the oldest and called as matriarch the maximum gestation period can be 22 months almost 2 years is the maximum gestation period so 22 months will be given will be correct it is highest for mama in case of all the mammals it is highest for elephant only so it is a correct one an elephant can normally go on calving till the age of 40 years only no it can calve even after that so it is a wrong one among the states in india the highest elephant population is found in karnataka not kerala highest elephant population is in karnataka so 3 is wrong 4 is wrong 1 and 2 are correct which of the statement given above is are correct so 1 and 2 only should be the answer So one and two only option A, A for apple shall be the right answer. Despite having large reserves of coal, why does India imports millions of tons of coal? India is having large reserves of reserves of coal, but what is the need to import the coal? 
India is not having, first of all, very good quality of coal. There is a demand supply mismatches there. We need good quality cooking coal for our thermal power plants. We need them. We need them for metallurgy. We need them for iron and steel industry. So it is required. So have a look at the statements. It is a policy of India to save its own coal reserves for future and import it from other countries for the present use. Nothing like that. So it is the wrong one. Most of the power plants in India are coal based. Yes. Still. India is having its maximum share of power generation from thermal power plants based on coal. And they are not able to get sufficient supplies of coal from within the country. They are not able to meet their demands from domestic supplies and so they are dependent on imports. That is the correct one. The steel companies need large quantity of cooking coal which has to be imported. Yes, the steel companies need large quantity and that needs to be imported. So one is wrong, two and three are correct. Which of the statements are correct? So two and three only option B, B for boy shall be the Right answer to this particular question. Question number 32. Recently there has been a concern over the short supply of group of elements, elements called rare earth metals. Why? Rare earth metals are known as rare earth metals. They are not rare in reality. They are found in abundance. They are not rare. Don't get confused ever by that term. China, which is the largest producer of these elements, has imposed some restrictions on their export. Yes, at that time, China has imposed the restrictions, so it is a correct one. Other than China, Australia, Canada and Chile, these elements are not found in any country. They are found in many of the countries. India is having almost 6% of rare earth metals. India is producing 1% of the total production. So it is there. USA produces, is second largest in production. And USA is not mentioned over here. So it will be a wrong one. So first was correct, two is wrong. Rare earth metals are essential for the manufacture of various kinds of electronic items and there is a growing demand for these elements. Rare earth metals found used in mobile phones, electronic gadgets, laptops, iPads, each and every electronic device is having use of rare earth metals. So it is a correct one. So one is correct, three is correct, one in three only. Option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Question number 33. Which of the following is are the possible consequences of heavy sand mining in river beds? Uh, river beds. What is sand mining? When the river moves, it carries the sediments along and the sediments are deposited both on the banks of the river and the bed of the river. That sand is mined out for construction purposes, for road building, for various type of activities, various type of uses. Sand mining is carried out in river beds. What are the possible consequences that you need to understand? Decreased salinity in river. In the sand mining, when the sand mining will be carried out, some particles of sand will move in the river water. It will increase the turbidity. So how the salinity will decrease? It will increase the salinity, so it will be a wrong one. Pollution of groundwater. Yes, when the sand mining is carried out, machines operate on diesel. They, they move over there. They release the effluents directly into the atmosphere. The water pollution take place. By removal of sand, natural filtration of groundwater, underground water is not possible. So it results in pollution of groundwater. It is the correct one. Lowering of the water table. When less water will infiltrate down, water table will move down. So it is also a correct one. So one is wrong, two and three are correct. So two and three only option B, B for boy shall be the right answer. Question number 34, consider the following statements. In India, state governments do not have the power to auction non-coal mines. State government is having the complete power on minor minerals. Non-coal mines, in the state government is having the power. Andhra Pradesh and Jharkhand do not have gold mines. Is it so? Both Andhra Pradesh and Jharkhand are having gold mines. So it is a wrong one. One was statement one is wrong one. Statement two is wrong. Rajasthan has iron ore mines in Rajasthan. Jaipur, Udaipur, Bharatpur, Alwar, Dhosa. All these are locations where iron ore mines are there. So it is the correct one. Which of the statement given above is are correct? Three only should be the answer. Have a look at the options. So three only, option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 35, consider the following minerals, bentonite, chromite, kyanite, silimanite. What is bentonite? It is plastic clay. In India, which of the above is are officially designated as major minerals? Now what are major minerals? How can they be differentiated from minor minerals? Any mineral can be categorized as a minor mineral. 
and all those minerals which are not categorized as minor minerals or major minerals. That is the definition in India. There is no specific definition of major minerals. So any mineral which is not categorized as a minor mineral will become a major mineral. And a question is asking which of these are major minerals. So what is bentonite? Bentonite is plastic clay. It was notified as a minor mineral. Right? And so it is in the category of minor minerals. So that cannot be the answer. Minor minerals are like sand, salt, clay, which are used in construction, which are used for road making, which are used for various activities. These are considered as minor minerals. Chromite. What is chromite? FeCr2O4. That is chromite. That is the only viable, financially viable ore of chromium. That is chromite. That is the ore of chromium. It is not categorized as a minor mineral. What is kyanite and what is sillimanite? Both are basically aluminium silicates, right? Al2O3, they are aluminium silicates. They differ. Kyanite and sillimanite differ from each other in terms of their crystal structure, physical properties, but the chemically they are more or less same. They are also not categorized as minor minerals. So 2, 3, and 4 will be categorized as major minerals, which is being which has been asked in the question. So 2, 3 and 4, option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 36. In the context of global oil prices, Brent crude oil is of frequently referred to in the news. What does this term apply? Brent crude oil is basically a crude oil from North Sea. It is a benchmark for international pricing. We are basically having uh, two major class, uh, benchmarks of crude oil. One is Texas, which is called as West Texas Intermediate. And one is Brent crude. Brent crude is also known as London Brent because it is close to London. That is called as London Brent, right? Brent crude oil is used for pricing as an international benchmark by OPEC countries. West Texas Intermediate is used by USA. Brent crude oil is having higher content of sulfur. Texas crude oil is having less content of sulfur. It is having almost 0.37% of sulfur. And Texas, that is in USA, that crude oil is having only 0.24% of sulfur. How to categorize the crude oil? Crude oil are categorized basically on three parameters. One is the content of sulfur. One is the specific gravity and their location, right? Brent crude oil is heavier crude oil. It is having high specific gravity as compared to Texas. It is having more sulfur content, more sulfur content, and so it is called as sour crude oil, S-O-U-R, sour crude oil. Texas crude oil is called as sweet crude oil, and it is called as lighter crude oil. So that is light crude oil. This is heavy crude oil, right? It is a major classification of crude oil, yes. It is sourced from North Sea, yes. It does not contain sulfur. It contains 0.37% of sulfur, so it is a wrong one. So one and two are correct, so one and two only option B, B for boy, shall be the right answer. Question number 37, which of the following is are the characteristic, characteristics of Indian coal? Indian coal, high ash content, yes, Indian coal is having 5 to 45 percent of ash content. Good coal is having 15 percent of ash content internationally. Indian coal is lacking on that, so it is the correct one. Low sulfur content, low ash fusion temperature. Indian coal is having low sulfur content, it is correct. It is having low ash fusion temperature, no, it is having very high ash fusion temperature. So it is a Wrong one. So 1 and 2 goes with Indian coal, 3 will not go. So 1 and 2 only, option A, A for apple shall be the right answer. In fact, high ash fusion temperature is reducing or degrading the quality of competitiveness of Indian coal, right? Question number 38. In which of the following regions of India are shale gas resources found? Now shale gas resources. India is having 6 uh, identified regions of shale gas resources. Kambay Basin, Kaveri Basin, Krishna Godavari Basin, then Assam Arakan Basin, then indo gangetic Basin. Basin. Have a look at the map. I will show you a map on this particular section. These six regions are predominantly identified for shale gas resources. Kambay Basin over here, Krishna Godavari Basin over here, Kaveri Basin over here. Damodar Valley, that is Gondwana Basin over here, Indo-Gangetic Basin over here, and Assam Arakan Basin over here. Coming back to the question, so all three are there. So all three, one, two, three, option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 39, the term West Texas Intermediate, sometimes found in you, refers to a grade of, we just now discussed that in preceding question. 
So it is crude oil option A, A for apple crude oil shall be the right answer. Question number 40, with reference to two non-conventional energy sources called coal bed methane and shale gas, consider the following statements. Coal bed methane is pure methane gas, it is a natural gas. Extracted from coal seems that is correct, but it is a natural gas. While shale gas is a mixture of propane and butane only, it is having other hydrocarbons only, it is not only propane and butane, other hydrocarbons also there. What is shale gas? It is having carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide. That can be extracted from fine grain sedimentary rocks, however the statement will become wrong. In India, abundant coal bed methane sources exist, no, but so far no shale gas sources have been found. We have just now seen six shale gas sources. So it is also wrong. So both the statements are wrong. Which of the statements are correct? Neither one nor two. Option D, E for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 41. In India, the steel production industry requires the import of saltpetry. What is saltpetry? That is KNO3, potassium nitrate. Where it is used? It has no use in the steel industry. Where it is used? Fertilizer industry, firecrackers on the Valley, then gunpowder, food preservatives, nothing to do with steel industry. Rock phosphate. Rock phosphate is what? Phosphorite. Content of phosphate is there. Phosphorus is there. Diammonium phosphate. Again, finding use in fertilizer industry. Coking coal. Coking coal is one of the primary requirements of a steel industry and India lacks that. So, it is imported from other countries. So, option C, C for cat, shall be the right answer. Question number 42. Consider the following crops of India. Cowpea. What is cowpea? Lobia. Green gram. Moong. Apples. Pigeon P, Arhar, which of the above is are used as a pulse, fodder and green marrow? Now here there is a discrepancy. Which of the above is are used as a pulse, fodder and green manure? Cowpea, that is lobia, it can be used as a pulse, yes, as a fodder, yes, as a green manure, yes. Green gram also goes with all the three options and pigeon P also goes with all the three options in reality. In actuality, in reality, whatever that is practical and it is being practiced in India, all three can be used as a pulse, all three can be used as a fodder, all three can be used as green manure. But the discrepancy is that UPSC has given a different answer and the correct answer is 1, 2 and 3. UPSC has given the answer as 1 and 3 only. So this is a discrepancy in the answer key that has been given by UPSC. But nothing can be done for that. So the correct answer shall be 1, 2 and 3. Question number 43. Consider the following crops of India. Groundnut, sesame, pearl millet. Which of the above are, is, are predominantly rain-fed crop or crop? So what is groundnut? Groundnut is a basically purely a kharif crop, a summer season crop. Sesame, till. It is grown as a kharif crop in North India and as a ravi crop in some parts of South India and Bihar. Pearl millet, bajra, basically what? A kharif crop. So which of these are rain fed? All three will become rain fed crops. So 1, 2 and 3, option D, D for dog shall be the right answer. Question number 44, many transplanted seedlings do not grow because the new soil does not contain favorable minerals. If you are transplanting, then you are all, you must have already done that. Soil testing, it cannot be the answer. Most of the root hairs grip the new soil too hard. It cannot be the answer. If they will grip hard, it will be good for the plant. Most of the root hairs are lost during transplantation. Leaves gets damaged during transplantation. Now leaves gets damaged during transplantation. It happens, but that is not a reason for seedlings not growing. However, most of the root hairs are lost as a result. Absorption of nutrients, minerals and water from the soil becomes less and that becomes the reason. So option C, C for cat. Most of the root hairs are lost during transplantation becomes the right answer to this particular question. Question number 45. Which of the following practices can help in water conservation in agriculture asked in 2017? Reduce or zero tillage of land. Tillage means plowing of land. If that will not be done, inter-particle spacing in the soil will be less and so infiltration of water will be reduced and so it will result in water conservation. It is the correct one. Applying gypsum before irrigating the field. Now when gypsum is applied, it helps in carbon sequestration. One ton of gypsum approximately sequesters around 0.26 ton of carbon dioxide, right? It will 
attract the clay particles, it will make the clumps, it will make infiltration easier and faster. And so water will penetrate down at a faster rate. So this cannot result in water conservation as per UPSC. Allow, allowing crop residue to remain in the field. If the crop residue will remain in the field, its exposure to sunlight, its exposure to moving air, that is wind, will be less. And so evaporation from the soil will be comparatively less. So it will result in water conservation, right? So the answer is 1 and 3 only. That is the answer that has been given by UPSC. However, there was a discrepancy again. Some of the people were having this opinion and it was still, it is still debatable that adding gypsum will also result in water conservation. But primarily it may also not result in water conservation. So whatever answer key that has been given by UPSC finally considered as correct in this particular question. So one and three only shall be the right answer. Have a look at the options over here. So one and three only option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Question number 46. With reference to the circumstances in Indian agriculture, the concept of conservation agriculture assumes significance. Which of the following fall under the conservation agriculture? Now conservation agriculture is basically a technical term that is having three basic parameters. Number one, minimum tillage. The land should be covered with crop residue. And rotation of crops must be practiced at an increased rate. It means concept of monoculture must be avoided. Have a look at the options. Avoiding the monoculture practices, yes. Adopting minimum tillage, yes. Avoiding the cultivation of plantation crop, nothing related to conservation agriculture. Using crop residues to cover the soil surface, I told you that. Adopting spatial and temporal crop sequencing or crop rotations, yes. So one, two, four and five are the correct options as per the demand of the question. Again here, the options are not having the correct option as 1, 2, 4 and 5. One is monoculture practices and third is crop rotation. Both are antonym of each other, right? So avoiding monoculture or practicing crop rotation is one and the same, right? So 2, 4 and 5 as per the option becomes the most ideal answer to this particular question. So 2, 4 and 5 option C, C for cat shall be the right answer to this particular question. Question number 47. With reference to the cultivation of Kharif crops in India in the last five years, consider the following statements. Now, these type of questions will can be answered if you are following economic survey. The question must have been asked in some particular year. Last five years from that particular year. Now, if the question comes up in 2023 or 2024, then the current economic survey will help you out. However, as per that year, area under rice cultivation is the highest. Yes, that is very much true. Area under cultivation of jowar is more than that of oil seeds. Oil seeds is having far more area as compared to jowar. So it is the wrong one. Area of cotton cultivation is more than that of sugarcane. Cotton cultivation is always having much more area than sugarcane. It is the correct one. Sorry, cotton cultivation is having, the statement says that area of cotton cultivation is more than that of sugarcane. It is absolutely correct. And area under sugarcane cultivation has steadily decreased. No, it is. It has in fact increased. So statement one was correct, two was wrong, three was correct. So one three only option A, A for apple shall be the right answer. Question number 48. Which one of the following groups of plants was domesticated in the new world and introduced in the old world? Now what is new world and what is old world? Take Atlantic Ocean as a boundary line. The continents located on the western side of Atlantic Ocean are considered as the new world and on the eastern side of Atlantic Ocean are called, considered as the old world. So Europe, Asia, Africa, these are old world and the new world is North America, South America, Caribbean Islands, Anglo America, right? Options are tobacco, cocoa, rubber, tobacco, cotton, rubber, cotton, coffee, sugarcane, rubber, coffee, wheat. If you look at cotton. Cotton is not something that was introduced in India. If you are talking about the new world and old world, it means somewhere at the end of medieval Indian history and the start of the period of modern history, these products or these crops must have been introduced in our country, India. Cotton is known since, since ancient times. Even we find the mention of cotton in Harappan culture. Same goes for wheat. So wheat and cotton are known in our country since Harappan times. So it has nothing to do with old world and new world and it was not 
introduced in our country or in the old world by the new world countries, right? So cotton cannot be there, wheat cannot be there. If you eliminate cotton and wheat, the only option left is tobacco, cocoa and rubber. So option A, tobacco, cocoa and rubber becomes the right answer to this particular question. Question number 49, the crop is subtropical in nature, a hard frost is injurious to it. It requires at least 210 frost free days. 210 frost free days goes only with cotton. And 50 to 100 centimeters of rainfall for its growth. A light, well drained soil capable of retaining moisture is ideally suited for the cultivation of the crop. Which one of the following is the crop? Cotton, jute, sugar cane, tea. Jute, 50 to 100 centimeters of rainfall. More than 200, 150 centimeters of rainfall required. Sugar cane, highly water intensive crop. Tea, rainfall throughout the year. So, cotton is the right answer. Option A, cotton shall be the right answer to this particular question. Question number 5050. With reference to the current trends in the cultivation of sugarcane in India, consider the following statements. A substantial saving in seed material is when bud chip settings are raised in a nursery and transplanted in the main field. Yes, when the nursery is prepared and then they are transplanted in the main field, it reduces the demand of the seed and the reduction is almost by 80% you won't imagine. So it is the correct one. When direct planting of seeds is done, the germination percentage is better with single budded sets as compared to sets with many buds. No, when many buds are there, germination percentage will be better. So it is the wrong one. If bad weather conditions prevail when sets are directly planted, single budded sets have better survival as compared to large sets. Again, wrong. If large sets are there, multi bud seed, uh, sets are there, they will be having a better chance. So it is also a wrong one. Sugarcane can be cultivated using seedlings prepared from tissue culture. Tissue culture means vegetative propagation. Yes, it can be prepared. So, 1 is correct and 4 is correct. So, 1 and 4 only. Option C, C for cat shall be the right answer. Question number 51. Southeast Asia has captivated attention of global community over space and time as a geostrategically significant region. Yes. Which among the following is the most convincing explanation for this global perspective? Southeast Asia. The region that we discussed, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Brunei, that area. It was a hot theater during the Second World War. So how it will become a strategically significant region? Its location between the Asian powers of China and India, no. It was the arena of superpower confrontation during the Cold War period, no. Its location between the Pacific and Indian Ocean and its preeminent maritime character. Each and every country of Southeast Asia is having a huge role to play in South China Sea, East China Sea, Indian Ocean and that entire region. So its location between Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean and its preeminent maritime character. Yes, that is the main reason for this particular region to have a strategically important Position. So option D, D for dog shall be the right answer. Question number 52, between India and East Asia, the navigation time and distance can be greatly reduced by which of the following? Deepening the Malacca Straits between Malaysia and Indonesia. By deepening of Malacca Strait, how will the time be reduced? It has nothing to do with that, so it cannot be there. Opening a new canal across the Kra Isthmus between the Gulf of Siam and Andaman Sea. Yes. Kra Peninsula that is located in the country Malaysia, a canal can be built, it will reduce the time to circumnavigate the entire region of Malacca state and that can be helpful. So two will go with the uh, demand of the question, one will not do go. So two only, option B, B for boy shall be the right answer. Question number 53, with reference to the Indus river system of the following four rivers, three of them pour into one of them which joins the Indus direct. Among the following, which one is such river that joins the Indus direct? Again, I would like you to have a look at this particular map of Indus river system. Indus originating from here, draining in this manner. Satlaj originating close to Indus and draining in this manner. Satlaj is the main river. Jhelum joins Chenab, Ravi joins Chenab, Chenab joins Satlaj and Satlaj joins Indus. Vyas joins Satlaj. That is Indus river system. Now if you have a look at the question, which one is such river that joins Indus direct? Chenab, it joins Satlaj. Jhelum, it joins Chenab. Ravi, it joins Chenab. 
Satlaj is the river that joins Indus directly. So option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 54, with reference to India, Didwana, Kuchaman, Sargol and Khatu are the names of glaciers, mangrove area, Ramsar site, saline lakes. They are all playas. They are salt water lakes and all are present in Rajasthan, Didwana, Kuchaman, Sargol, Khatu. Khatu is also a very famous pilgrimage. So they are saline lakes. Option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number 55. Consider the following rivers. Brahmini, Nagavali, Subarnareka, Vamsarhara. And what is the question? Which of the above rise from the Eastern Ghats? Okay. Brahmani. Brahmani rises from the Rachi region in Jharkhand. That is not part of Eastern Ghats. Nagavali rises from Kalahandi of Odisha. That is a part of Eastern Ghat. Subarnarekha again rises from Chotanagpur region in Jharkhand area. That is not a part of Eastern Ghats. And Vamsadhara, yes, it rises on Eastern Ghats of Odisha. So 1 is not there, 3 is not there, 2 and 4 are there. So having a look at the answers, options 2 and 4, option B, B for boy shall be the right answer. And the last question for this session, with reference to India, the terms halvi, ho, koi pertain to dance forms of Northwest India, musical instrument, prehistoric painting, tribal languages. They are basically halvi is known in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Andhra. These are a, this is a tribal language. Ho, that is West Bengal, Bangladesh, Kui, that is southeast of Dravidian region. That is also a tribal language. So the correct answer to this particular question is all these are tribal language. That is option D. D for dog is the right answer. That is tribal language. That's all for this particular session. Thank you.